Hey everybody, Mike here with another edition of Making Sense of Transformers, a series where I talk about various topics within the Transformers universe that need a little extra analysis and explanation. A little while ago, I polled my amazing subscribers on which video I should do first, and 68% of the nearly 3,000 votes chose the Transformers movie timeline. We've never gotten an officially released one to this point, so that means we're left to come up with one on our own. Some big-name publications such as Screen Rant and IGN have attempted to make timelines, but they were obviously not created by someone who has watched these movies way too many times. Now before we begin, I'd like to point out that this timeline is made almost entirely based on on-screen dates, whether written or spoken. There will be a few events that will be placed in a certain position without a date due to lack of information, and a few dates will be assigned based on clues given to us throughout the films. This timeline will not include any type of tie-in material such as comic books and the Dark of the Moon prequel video game, because they all start to contradict everything and it would cause a mess greater than the X-Men timeline. So that's enough introduction, let's begin our Transformers timeline at the beginning. As Optimus Prime in the first film stated, before time began, there was the cube. I'd say that's a great point to start from. Now moving forward from the AllSpark, Earth formed around Unicron millions of years ago. We don't know where this version of Unicron came from or when exactly Earth formed around him, but it obviously came sometime before 175 million BC, because that was when the supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart, spreading Unicron's horns around the world. Fast forward to 65 million BC, and that is when the creators of Transformers activated a bunch of seeds on Earth, and this was the event that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. The creators harvested Transformium, used it to build Cybertronians, and used the AllSpark to give them life. Then in 17,000 BC, the Fallen tries to use the Sun Harvester to drain the power of the Earth's Sun, but a battle breaks out, because the Seven Primes made an agreement that they would never destroy a planet with life. Amidst the chaos of the battle, the six other Primes steal the Matrix of Leadership from the Fallen and sacrifice themselves to hide it in a tomb made of their own bodies. Sometime after that, at an unspecified date, the Transformers break out into civil war as the Autobots and Decepticons are formed. Thousands of years pass before the AllSpark, for whatever reason, crashes on Earth in 10,000 BC. Megatron and Sentinel Prime strike a deal to rendezvous on Earth with Sentinel's new space bridge technology, but Sentinel and the other passengers of the Ark are hit by Decepticon forces, who obviously didn't get the memo. Or maybe they did, and Starscream saw an opportunity. The Ark is left drifting freely in space as a result. Now Megatron later decided to go after the AllSpark on his own, and according to Sector 7's Tom Banachek, he crashed in the Arctic Circle around 1000 BC. This state could be moved around a bit though, due to it being an estimate. After hiding out with the staff of the Mad Goddess Quintessa for an unspecified amount of time, the Twelve Guardian Knights decide to join King Arthur in a battle against the Saxons. After the Saxons were defeated, King Arthur and his knights, along with the Guardian Knights, form the Knights of the Round Table, with the motto, No Sacrifice, No Victory. In 1895, Captain Archibald Witwicky falls into a cave in the Arctic Circle. He discovers Megatron frozen in the ice, and the coordinates of the location of the AllSpark are printed into Archibald's glasses. He unfortunately goes insane. In 1913, almost 12,000 years after the AllSpark crashed, it is discovered by the first seven. The discovery leads to the formation of Sector 7 in 1927 under President Calvin Coolidge. In order to prevent alien forces from discovering the AllSpark, President Herbert Hoover decides that it would probably be a good idea to hide it. So in 1931, construction begins on the Hoover Dam around the AllSpark. Its size would prevent any energy signatures from being detected, and then a few years later in 1934, Sector 7 is somehow able to transport Megatron to Hoover Dam without awakening him from his little nap. Next comes some new information we first learned about in Transformers The Last Night. Apparently Bumblebee and Hot Rod both came to Earth and fought in World War II. More specifically, they were part of the Devil's Brigade, a commando unit that was formed in 1942 and was disbanded two years later. 
Then of course, on April 30th of 1945, Adolf Hitler is killed by his very own watch. That's the watch that killed Hitler. Don't screw with it. Things are quiet for a little bit until NASA discovers the Ark carrying Sentinel Prime had crash-landed on the moon in mid-1961. The exact date is a little tricky for this event, though, because the subtitles simply state that it's 1961, but then the official document regarding the impact states that the date is July 10th of 1962. We could go ahead and assume that was a typo, placing the impact on July 10th of 1961. However, John F. Kennedy's speech to Congress about putting a man on the moon happened on May 25th of 1961. So since that really doesn't make sense or line up, it's best to just gloss over this one as a continuity error and say the impact was around the middle of 1961. Now, the U.S. might have been the first country to put a man on the moon, but the USSR sent a camera there first. In April 1963, the Luna 4 takes some photos of the hundreds of pillars on the moon. And then shortly after, the Decepticons end up stealing most of them. Finally, on July 16th of 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin depart Earth on Apollo 11 and land on the moon four days later on July 20th. It is on that day that they step foot on the Ark. A little over three years later, on December 19, 1972, the crew of the sixth and final manned moon mission returned in Apollo 17. Soundwave and Laserbeak worked with humans to prevent NASA from ever returning. So that Luna 4? Well, it wasn't the only unmanned probe sent by the Soviets. One of them picked up the Ark's fuel rod, and after years of tests, it blew up, causing the Chernobyl disaster on April 20th of 1986. Now, depending on if Hasbro and Paramount ever make up their minds, I'll be placing the events of Bumblebee next with an asterisk, as it may or may not happen in this universe. If it did, it would happen in the summer of 1987. Fast forwarding a bit, Judy and Ron Witwicky become the proud parents of Samuel James Witwicky on September 13, 1991. This date has varied from a couple different sources, however, this is the date on Sam's driver's license in Revenge of the Fallen. Now, for a while after this, things seem to be quiet. If Bumblebee is considered canon, there might have been a few things happening to be revealed in later movies. But if not, another Transformers associated event doesn't happen until Christmas Day of 2003. The Beagle 2 Mars rover might have been reported missing, but it wasn't. It successfully landed on Mars and was greeted by a jolly old Decepticon. Finally, we reach the present day events of the five Transformers films, but only two of them take place during the year in which they were released in theaters. The first Transformers film took place in June 2007. We know it's the month of June since Sam just finished up his junior year of high school, and the movie taking place during its release year is backed up by George Bush being president. Can you wrangle me up some ding-dongs, darling? After the main events of the film, a few important things do happen. Immediately after the battle, Starscream of course takes command of the Decepticons left on Earth, and later that month, Sector 7 is disbanded, leaving Simmons to unfortunately live with his mother. Nest would then form most likely sometime later that year. Since Sam just finished up his junior year, this would mean that he'd graduate high school in June 2008 rather than 2009 as Revenge of the Fallen seems to suggest. My only explanation for this would be that Sam decided to take a gap year before heading off to college. Now how do we know that Revenge of the Fallen takes place in 2009? Well, that one's pretty simple because Barack Obama is president during the events of the film. And more specifically, the movie takes place in the month of September because classes at Princeton University typically begin during the first or second week of the month. Also during the events of the film, it is worthwhile to take note that Shockwave was first spotted on Earth at this time as well as backed up by a newspaper article during the fight against Devastator. Next, we have the big breakup. Sam and Michaela call it quits on their relationship after growing seemingly so much closer in Revenge of the Fallen. I'm going to place this in early 2010. I'd assume it wouldn't happen so quickly after the battle in Egypt, since they realized they truly loved each other, 
but it wouldn't happen too much later because Sam meets Carly when he receives a medal from President Obama. Sam would then graduate from Princeton during the last week of May in 2013 after completing his four-year degree in geopolitics, and that takes us straight into Transformers Dark of the Moon. Sam has been job hunting for roughly three months, so we'll go ahead and estimate the events of Dark of the Moon, including the Battle of Chicago, as taking place in September 2013. Nest was disbanded shortly after the battle by a swift move from Congress, so we'll put that during the month of September as well. Later that year, or in early 2014, a CIA unit called Cemetery Wind is formed to hunt evil Decepticons, but Harold Adinger has other plans. Speaking of Adinger, he tells us the Age of Extinction takes place five years after the Battle of Chicago, and we know that Tessa only has two more weeks of school left, so we can place Age of Extinction, the Hong Kong Battle, and the departure of Optimus Prime to find his creators in May of 2018. Tessa would then go on to graduate in June while the Transformers Reaction Force, aka the TRF, is formed in mid to late 2018 to hunt down all of the now illegal Transformers and put them in jail. Thank you for your hospitality, Brad. I know where you live, Enrique. Say hello to your wife for me. Finally, this brings us to The Last Night, which most likely takes place around the year 2020. There's no concrete time references given for this one, but we need to take into account that Transformer jails have already been built, but Tessa is still in college as she's still not with Cade, meaning that the film at least takes place no later than 2022. And there we have it, the complete Transformers movie timeline from start to finish, and I honestly have to say, for as crazy as these movies are with historical events, the timeline makes sense for the most part compared to something like the X-Men franchise, or even recently with Spider-Man Homecoming's eight years later blunder. That one, it still gets me to this day. Now hopefully I didn't mess anything up with this timeline, but I feel like this is going to be the closest we get to an official timeline for this universe. Now I really hope you all enjoyed this latest edition of Making Sense of Transformers, and thank you to everyone who participated in the poll. The video that finished second place in the polling will be my next Making Sense of Transformers video, and that will feature if Quintessa is actually the creator of the Transformers. Make sure to check out previous episodes by heading to the Making Sense of Transformers playlist on my channel, and just like before, if you have another topic you'd like to see me tackle, leave a comment below. Also, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Transformers-related content. Signing out, I'm Mike. See you next time.